All right, guys. So this, hi, it's been a while since I've been on. I wanted to show y'all uh, my quick way that I do brisket, and it is cheating. Like, cheating, cheating, because I put it in the oven. But I like the smoky flavor of, you know, smoked brisket. So there are a few times that I have put it, or I've had my nephews cook it in the smoker for, and again, we cheat, or I cheat, and I tell them just to cook it for like four hours, and then I put it in the oven for the rest of the time. But I wanted to do this one slow and low all night long because it's been so hot lately, and... I had this brisket in the freezer and I was like, you know what, I need to cook it. So this is probably about an 11 pound brisket. And I wanted to kind of show you all some of the seasonings that I have for brisket or any kind of rub. This one is my all time favorite. It's the Grillmates Applewood Rub. I love the sweet and the smoky taste that it gives. It's just, to me, it's just delicious. I love to put this on my pork chops, my brisket. I've even put it on chicken, but more on pork than anything because it just gives it just gives it a really good flavor. There are a collection of seasonings that I have and I've bought them from I honestly couldn't even tell you where. I've bought them everywhere. This one's an original style barbecue brisket rub. I haven't used very much of it. Um, sometimes I buy them and I forget I have them up here in the cabinet. This is a Kinder's uh, wood fire garlic. That one's a good one. This one, I used it all. It's, um, I want to say I actually bought this out of town when I was down south. It's a chicken rub, but I think I used a lot of it for brisket too. Because you can use some of these for other meats. It doesn't have to just be for what it says, like chicken. And sometimes they'll tell you it's it goes better with blah, blah, blah. Like this one says... All things beef, especially steak, brisket, burgers, fajita meat, as well as lamb chops and kebabs. This one is the Thunder, <clears throat> Thundering Longhorn Beef Rub. It's very good. It does have some kick to it. That's why I think this is a new one. I think I ran out of one and then I, I bought a new one. Um, <clears throat> this one does have coarse black pepper, cumin, ancho chilies, espresso, oregano, garlic, and salt. That's a good one. Um... This one's another one that I love, the Weber's Dry Rub uh, KC Barbecue. It's great for beef, pork, and chicken again. I've used, I think this is my second or third bottle that I've gone through. Um, and a lot of times I'll season up to me and I'll have my nephews uh, smoke it for me because I do have a smoker. It's a small one that I can put like one brisket on or two racks of ribs. So this one is a uh, barbecue hickory rub. I haven't used very much of it and I honestly can't tell you where I bought it. So what I do sometimes is I like so many different flavors that I get an empty one and I mix them all up. And that way I can add extra stuff if I want to. Like if I want a little more sweeter and I can add brown sugar. If I want it a little more spicier, I could add more chili powder or um, cayenne or something, which I don't because I don't do spicy. Um, but again, this one is the main ingredient that I have in here and it's my go-to. I actually had a cousin of mine ask me how to do um, pork and I told her just, I do use a binder on pork. I was just taught that way to use mustard as a binder and then rub it really good with this. And it came out perfect. She said the whole family loved it. For brisket, I really don't ever use a binder. Some people do. I don't, I just season it like crazy. But what I'm going to do is trim it a little bit because there is some fat on here. So I'm going to turn it around. And I sometimes don't like these little black spots. So I do trim those off. And it doesn't have like too crazy of a thick layer of fat. Please don't come after me if I don't trim Cindy this the right Cindy Ramirez is watching. Please don't come after me if I don't trim this the right way. Okay, guys. But I just trim it enough that I just want some of that fat off because I do want some of the fat on it. Why? Because it gives it a juicier flavor. And who doesn't like the fat? You make it you know? for the dogs? RJ wants to cook it for the dogs. Sometimes I do chicken, but no, I think we'll be okay. Not right now? No. Okay. So I cut off a little piece right there. Um... As I said, I'm going to cook this in the oven, and I'm probably going to do it at either, 
I might do, it's going back and forth if I want to do it at 300 or 275 and I want to, I think I want to do it at 275, the slow and low method. You can, if you have a smaller family and you want to do half of this brisket, you can and do it in the crock pot. That's another way to, to do it slow and low too, which I could do both methods, you know, cut it in half and then um, show you guys uh, both, but I kind of want to just keep it all in whole piece and keep it in a whole piece and then go from there. I am probably butchering this guys. I'm sorry. I'm just, it's late. Uh, we had our back to school shopping today, which was a lot. Uh, shoes, clothes, everything from school supplies, etc. Look, I'm not taking off a whole lot. Just enough that I don't want it to be overly fatty and as you're doing this please be careful if you you know I have been known to cut myself so just be careful it's a little bit on this side you can cut away from you this knife is a new knife that I got at Aldi's it came in a set of three they're very sharp uh, Bella had the the experience of cutting her finger the other day with one she said it wasn't good <laughs> So, wasn't it didn't feel good I think so um, again I'm just gonna roughly kind of cut off some of the fat I'm sure again I'm not doing it the best way but I'm just I don't want to cut too much off I just want to cut some and as I said this is probably an 11 pound almost 11 and a half pound brisket and um, I'm just gonna let it cook tonight and just see how it looks in the morning when I wake up. I might set an alarm and check, but I actually have those uh, Bluetooth, um, I can't think guys, sorry. Bluetooth the Bluetooth thermometer, 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 meat thermometer, so I can probe it and have the <clears throat> the end receiver on my by my bed and once it reaches to a certain temperature, I could come check it and stuff. So after it cooks for a good while, Ow. you know, I might uncover it or I might cover. I do it different ways. The few times that I've done it where I have the boys cook it outside for me, I have. Um, John is watching. Uncle John. I've cut it. Hi guys, whoever's watching. I know it's late. Um, I've rubbed it down really good and they smoked it and then when they cut when it comes off of the smoker. I wrap it in butcher paper and I put like um, beef consomme on it just to kind of let it have that extra juiciness in it and finish it off in the oven and it's really good. And then of course after it cooks you got to let it rest for a little bit and stuff. Like I said I don't want to cut off too much of the fat but I want to cut off enough that you know it's not like too fatty. And this is a good piece, I think. And I know that there's ways that you can actually check if it's good. I think they said if you can bend it. I didn't want to touch it, but if you can't bend it all the way, that means it's actually a pretty good piece. If you have a lot of fat, then it's going to be easier to bend. I'm going to chunk this in the trash, which I probably actually get a bag because we have dogs and they will tear it up so I'm gonna wipe my hand really quickly and wash your hands please it feels weird it's fat <laughs> what do you expect i don't know so a lot of times when you're doing this you want to wear gloves which i ran out of gloves uh, you want me to open some no I, I got it um i ran out of gloves guys so um because your hands can get dirty. If you have nails, it's going to get really sticky. I don't have nails right now. Um, and I do a really, really good thick layer of rub. Just because I think it gives it a better... It seeps in really good. And it's not going to look like it at first. And this one has another little... There we go. So we can pour it. I love the way this stuff smells. It just... It's delicious. And then I'm 
what I do is I rub the first little layer in just so it kind of gets in there and I make sure there's enough in on it on all sides even the back the sides the bottom everywhere and then I go back and rub some more and have like a dusting layer I guess if you want to call it and again don't come at me please <laughs> I do the best I can with what I can and what I mean is all the professional people that barbecue um, please let me know if you can give me any other tips but this is the way I've done it and it came out it comes out good my family loves it they enjoy it and I just wanted some brisket I actually wanted to go eat brisket today but I was like well let's just go eat something else so we ate something else now I'm gonna have to get both hands dirty just to make sure it's on there and as you can see it's it's pretty good you don't like I said you don't really need a binder for this RJ get that bowl pan and make sure it's cleaned out there's nothing in it that water ain't there's water disgusting rinse it out please and then when I put it back on the tray I'll put some more seasoning on it and when you when I cook this I cook the fat side up because the fat will seep into the brisket is what I've been told so I'm gonna make sure there's a good layer of seasonings on this side like I said I want to make sure it's got like a dry dust of it pat it in there how would you do a moist rub a moist rub yeah that's when you would do um, the um, binder because sometimes the binder is so wet that it will um, what's a binder the binder is like mustard some people ha I've seen use mayonnaise a lot of times they use the mustard because it's got that vinegar in it instead of using like uh, some people use apple cider vinegar to spray on it and stuff and that's what helps I would think keep in the moisture of it so the binder like I said when I use pork I use that because it does because pork tends to be a little more dry so you want it more moist brisket it has a good amount of fat that you don't need it to be too I mean you want it moist of course but that fat on it does keep it pretty moist so and again I'm not an expert this is just what I know and what I've seen and so yeah so I'm gonna put this side down because that's the not fat side it's 11 pounds it is actually a good weight I'm gonna grab all this and sprinkle more and it barely fits in this foil pan. This is those family size foil pans. Be sure you have enough counter space because it does make a mess. And I tell you, when this is cooking, man, and I'm starting this at, what time is it? Like 11, 10? It's 12.01. Uh, 12. 12. 12. <laughs> so when I'm cooking this in the oven, about, I don't know, four or five hour, four hours, in it smells the whole house i'm not kidding it smells amazing so like i said i'm gonna go ahead and put this in at i think i'm gonna do 275 i'm gonna do it at 275 let it cook and i'll check on it and again in the morning i will definitely show y'all pictures of what it looks like i'm gonna see i hope i have some of the beef consomme if i don't i'm gonna look for something else to use as a um something to help keep it moist I said I know my brother uses um, I think it's apple cider vinegar and pineapple juice or apple juice I believe and he puts it in a spritz bottle but again that's when he is actually doing it on the smoker since this is going in the oven I probably don't even need that because I am gonna cover it and it is gonna cook pretty good after it cooks for a while I might take it out and wrap it and, and put it on a rack so I might get like a little bit more of the toastiness I guess but 
thank you guys for watching I just wanted to jump on and show you how to do a quick brisket excuse my hand it's a mess um, again I'm gonna wash my hands cover this clean this all up throw it in the oven and I will definitely show y'all what it looks like tomorrow and we will have brisket tomorrow so love you guys thank y'all for watching and I will see y'all tomorrow okay bye I wanted to show you really quickly how I'm gonna do some baked potatoes for dinner with the brisket so basically I mean we just got some russet potatoes we got them washed cleaned up and I like to add a piece of bacon to it so I just you know wrap it all the way around and if it's one is not enough then I get another piece or I'll do two pieces depending on how many potatoes I have if I have enough strips then I'll do two strips because I do like the bacon and it gives a crust it gives it a nice um, taste and it gives it a, that salty flavor that you want anyways so that's pretty much it and then you're just gonna wrap it up and since it's so hot still I am gonna cook these at a lower temperature um, I'm gonna cook them probably at like 2 250 maybe and let them cook for a while because I already cooked the brisket and it's already done I gotta just take it out see what it looks like and stuff and I'll jump on later to show you guys that um, but when I don't wrap it with bacon I do put olive oil around the potato and put salt lots of salt um, it just it gives it a better flavor trust me but anyways just wanted to jump on real quick and just show y'all how we're gonna do baked potatoes that's it thanks guys see y'all later so I don't know if y'all remember I shoved this brisket in the oven last night at I think it was about 1 o'clock in the morning and I put it at 275 so I actually let it cook until about 11 o'clock today which I probably shouldn't have let it go that long Anyways, but um, this is, I'm, I hadn't opened it. I was starting to, but I was waiting to show you guys. So let's see what it looks like. Very warm. Looks pretty good. It smells like Mississippi. Sure, it smells like Mississippi. There's a piece of foil right there. I'm just going to fish it out. Oh, yeah, it's pretty tender forks just going I mean the knife's just going in I mean it's a knife but still it's just pulling apart I want to cut this up though and sh maybe shred it up because we are going to do some baked potatoes with this and I got those in the oven already I'm going to let this sit and then we'll cut it up later it actually made my mouth water anyways just wanted to jump on really quickly show you guys and I will see y'all later thanks bye Hey guys, so I told y'all I would show y'all the brisket when it came out. So this is what it looks like. I don't know if y'all can see it. I'm gonna... Sorry, my thing is just like, it's really dark in here. It's always dark. Anyways, this is what it looks like after I let it sit. And like I said, I let it cook for about... Um, 10 hours? 10 hours. So I'm just going to take it out and put it on the cutting board and probably chop it up and let's see what it tastes like. It's 11 pounds so it's a bit heavy. I'm hoping it don't fall apart. It's really juicy. Mm -hmm. Stay pretty much intact. So when you cut brisket it has a, a cap on it or um, I don't remember what it's called. It's this piece right here. So you kind of cut it one way and then the other one you're gonna kind of find the fatty part of it. See, I'm finding it right, right now. And you're gonna cut it off. And that, that it's cause it's like it goes two different ways against the grain. Hopefully that makes sense. It is really just like falling apart guys I'm not kidding so this is another piece this is one piece so Monica's watching and again you want to kind of cut against the grain which I hope I think I'm going the right way can I grab a piece get a piece son 
course the kids want to get some. Monica said, wow, that looks good. I hope it tastes good. Or she's not saying anything. I'm tasting. Let me savor it. It's good. It has a lot of flavor, guys. I don't know if it's because it was sitting in the mm. juice or what, but so much flavor in this. That's really good. Like I said, this, I just, y'all saw me sprinkle that seasoning on last night, and it literally, look, it's falling apart. We're going to have it with some baked potatoes, which I'm going to pull those out, too, so y'all can see. I think they're done. Cindy said it looks delicious, Prima. It's very good. I'm not going to lie. It's very tasty. So I think these potatoes are done. And like I said, I didn't want to turn on the oven too hot. So I cooked these at 250 and they're actually pretty warm. Ooh. So when you get a potato, you're going to see how I can see how I can squeeze it and leave the marks in it, then it's probably done. I try to let them sit and rest for a minute. Can you see it? I think it needs a little more time or I can actually unwrap them and so that way they can cook a little bit more. Because I like that, um, I like my bacon to be a little charred. But they are pretty much done. Abby Hain said I want some. Well, I've been talking about maybe doing plates, you know, to sell, but I haven't done, I haven't thought about it enough, I think. Anyways, so this is a brisket. Hopefully y'all can see it, see the coloring on it. And like I said, you want to cut the, this fat cap off, and what you're going to do is cut it a different way. So let me try to pull this piece out. It's a long piece. That's really good. It's got a lot more fat in it, but Dash is watching oh. something. Abby said, I'm just coming for dinner. LOL. <laughs> right? Okay, I'm trying to find the going against the grain, like I said. She said, let me know when it's ready. Well, it's already done, pretty much. And this is the other other side. See how it's just falling apart, guys? I said I did it slow and low in the oven for about 10 hours. I started it at 1 a.m., guys, because it's been so hot lately. I It's been ridiculously hot, and I, like I said, I had this in my freezer, and I was like, I need to cook it. I seasoned it with pretty much all the little seasonings I had, but this one is my go-to for brisket and pork. Seasoned it really, really good. Threw it in the oven at 275. Covered it with foil. I'm gonna give a little piece towards it. Covered it, put it in the oven. Started it at 1 a.m. Let it cook till 10 o'clock this morning. Pulled it out and it's still warm. But I left it on the stove. And then I put my potatoes in at 250 for, what time did we start those at? What? The potatoes. Like Around 3.30? 3. They're 3 o'clock and they've been in there for two hours, so I'm probably going to go ahead and let them cook another hour or so, because we're not going to do dinner right this second, but I want to cut all this up, probably put it back in the pan and let it just sit on the stove so it stays warm. Oh, belly your dogs. I can Anywho, well, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for... It looks good. Like, I'm starving right now, and I might just, might just keep picking at it, so I want to hurry up and cut it up, put it back in the pan before... The kids eat it up, and then we have no meat for dinner. So, thank you guys for watching again. Um, hopefully, I'll make some ribs this week too in the oven, and I'll show you my method, and we'll go from there. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a good day.